Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about buckling and how it enters the design procedure for cross sections in Caramba 3D. First of all, buckling can occur whenever there is an element under compression and when the element is slender enough so that this instability of buckling occurs before the strength of the material is reached. You can see here, for example, a bridge and the upper girder is in compression, so at some point it can start to buckle like you see it here. Buckling occurs in case of rather slender structures and so that's, that's why it's so important to consider buckling in case of steel structures, which are usually, usually very, very slender. The theory behind buckling um, was elaborated by Euler and what you can see here are the so-called Euler cases of buckling. There's always a column of length L with different support or boundary conditions and depending on the boundary conditions uh, one gets different buckling shapes and also different values for the buckling load. In case of a fixed fixed uh, situation, the buckling shape looks like this. And um, the parameter which describes the influence of these uh, support conditions is the so-called buckling length or effective length of the system, which is the distance between the inflection points of the buckling shape. So in this case here, it's approximately from here to here, which is 0.5 times the total height of the column. In the hinged fixed case, the distance of the inflection points is from here to approximately here. So the effective length, the buckling length is 0.7 times the height of the column. In case of the hinged hinged column, buckling length is equal to the length of the column and for a cantilever case you can uh, think about this shape here as being mirrored about this plane here. So the distance of the inflection points is from here all the way to here. So that's why it's two times the height of the column. The formula for calculating the buckling uh, load can be seen here. Buckling, the critical buckling load is equal to pi to the power of 2 times the Young's modulus of the material times the moment of inertia of the cross section divided by the buckling length. K is the buckling uh, that's the, the, the value which uh, one needs to multiply the column length with to get the buckling uh, length. So buckling length to the power of 2, which shows that this is a very important parameter, it's to the power of 2. So a wrong buckling length gives rise to a very wrong buckling load. So for design procedures of cross sections like the one according to Eurocode 3, it's very important to have this buckling length set correctly. And this is what I would like to show now, how this value um, can be set and uh, what the default values are which are used in Karamba. Here this uh, is a very simple example, it's a hinged, a hinged, hinged column with a load of 100 kN acting downwards. The geometry is this uh, line here of a length of 15 meters, which gets converted here into a beam element. I want to do a cross-section optimization, that's why I use here a family of circular hollow cross-sections. The family consists of 240 members. Um, for the initial system, I use the 15th 
member of this cross-section family as a starting point. Here we have the supports at the starting point and end point of the line. It's, uh, as you can see here, hinge changed. And that's the nodal load of 100 kN. This all gets assembled into a model. We get out here the mass in kilogram and uh, the cross-section optimization is then done using the optimized cross-section component, which gives this mass here and you see the resulting cross-section is a circular hollow cross-section of a diameter of 170 millimeters and a wall thickness of 8 millimeters. One can also see that uh, the stress-wise utilization is only at 10%. So this shows clearly that the system um, buckles way before the strength of the material is reached via compression. Another question is how the um, buckling length is set here in this case. The default procedure uh, by Caramba is this, that um, for any beam, it uh, looks for the closest points which connect to more than two elements or which are connected to a support condition. So in this case here, uh, the corresponding points would be this support point and this support point, and this uh, results in a buckling length of 50 meters, which is correct. Uh, in order to see the assumed buckling length, um, after model assembly, uh, I disassembled the model again. I then disassembled the element, and from this disassembled element component, I can now get the buckling length in local y or set direction and also the so-called lateral torsional buckling length. Um, lateral torsional buckling is a phenomenon which uh, can occur in case of so-called open cross-section light like I-beams. Um, but uh, it would now lead too far to uh, explain this in more detail. Uh, but what we see here is now a value of minus 15. The minus means that uh, the buckling length was set by Caramba and not by the user. And so the buckling length used is 15 meters in this case. The buckling length can also be uh, determined before assembling the model. In that case, however, there's not enough information to determine the points which uh, the closest points which connect to more than two elements or to a support. And so the buckling length is set equal to the length of an element. And since here this line is 15 meters long, um, also the correct uh, result uh, is uh, shown here. But what happens now if I um, subdivide my initial geometry into several segments. So I'll do this now. The result is unchanged, first of all. However, the buckling length now right after the line to beam component is now set to 1.5, which is not correct, which is too small. However, after assembling the model, the procedure of uh, Caramba uh, still results in the correct value of 15, since it looks up the closest point with uh, support or an additional element connected. And since uh, this value is smaller than this value, uh, the larger value wins. Uh, yeah. Um, if I add here now an additional beam in the middle 
of my color, which uh, would cantilever here to the side. What happens now is that the default Caramba buckling length is uh, wrong. Uh, here the value is values are still unchanged. The minus one comes from the length of this beam here. But since this beam cantilevers, it it in reality has no influence on the buckling length of uh, this column here. However, um, due to the assumptions in Caramba, we now get out here a buckling length value which is too small. So it's the distance between this point here and the supports and this is minus uh, 7.5 meters which is uh, of course wrong. Another question is how to set this uh, value again correctly. And also if you take a look at the resulting cross sections they are now smaller. So from diameter 170 they decrease now to 114, which is of course wrong. And uh, now in this situation, one needs to set uh, the buckling length manually. Uh, and by the way, also in this case, it would be necessary to set the buckling length manually since the buckling length for these members here would be from this point here to approximately this point. So it's like three or four times the length of an individual element. Um, the way how to do it is to use a modify element component. <clears throat> this component uh, takes as input a beam, it outputs a beam, and uh, one can now input here values that uh, change the properties of the incoming beam. And here the group second order lets you define the buckling length manually. So if I choose here now a value between 15 and maybe 100 for the buckling length in y direction, One can first of all see that the value is now positive for the buckling length in y direction. And um, one can also see that if I increase now this value, also the cross sections increase, which proves that the buckling length here has an effect on the design procedure according to Eurocode 3. One last point, um, in Caramba it's now also possible to not only input individual line, lines here in the line to beam component, but also splines and polylines. And in case of splines and polylines, the buckling length uh, used here after the line to beam component is the distance between the endpoints of these uh, splines or pull lines. So for example here, uh, this line here is split into 10 uh, segments. I get out here one pull line and the, if I feed in now this pull line and um, disable here again the modification, the user modification of the buckling length, I get here now again 15. So this can be used uh, to set the buckling length of polylines lines in an easy way. Um, in order that this works, however, one needs to set this input here to true, which is actually the default. So um, once again, this uh, buckling length is uh, very important. If uh, one wants to do a, a realistic, wants to get realistic uh, results out of this cross section optimizer, so um, leaving it at the default values is not 
always safe as uh, one can see here. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.